Backstreet Boys and Girls! <laughs> Isn't that how Captain Kangaroo started? I think I grew up watching Captain Kangaroo. I believe. I'm old! Getting old, right? Okay, Nikon D500. Nikon D4. Both are rocking XQD cards, by the way. Of course, D4 is rocking also. A compact flash card in the secondary slot. Important. No one's made a video about this before, and neither have I, and I don't know why I didn't do it. I've got a... I thought of this in preparing for an event I have to shoot on Wednesday. It's uh, outdoors. Is that when stuff is having spontaneously, obviously both of these cameras can rip them off hard and fast, right? There's only a couple downsides to the Nikon D500. Well, not really. I mean, I have a pair of Nikon D500s. It is quick, kind of like a nocturnal animal with gigantic eyeballs to blow specular highlights. And uh, when you're turning, no matter how prepared you are for a situation, like for event photography indoors, where you obviously have predictable lighting, I mean, someone can still be in a shadow, I shoot everything with a, a speed light and TTL and dial in flash comp if I actually see it coming. But I shoot the camera all manual, one two, one, one two fiftieth of a second and uh, whatever aperture it is that I choose. So all manual and TTL, but for outdoor events, which is, this is going to be, the reason I'm not bringing the Nikon D500, even though the autofocus is obviously faster, and the matrixing options for uh, continuous autofocus are definitely superior. I mean, this is a wonderful hardcore sports action wildlife camera, so why would I bring the Nikon D4. I got a pair of Nikon D4s also, by the way. D4 is still an obnoxiously overpriced camera. It averages about $2,100 in really good shape. That means like about, you know, 20 to 60,000 clicks. The reason being is the uh, huge eyeballs on this camera has got wonderful dynamic range. Now, one thing I actually noticed, uh, excuse me, one thing I actually uh, told myself uh, ages ago is any time doing outdoor events where things are spontaneous and you've actually captured that moment when you're ripping the shot off. Um, as you're turning, and of course the lighting radically changes, I mean, you have some really, you know, nuclear highlights and some hardcore shadows. Well, the uh, raw processing on the main board on the Nikon D500 is better, and most things are better, certainly so autofocus. I'm going to bring the Nikon D4 because I actually have that amount of uh, headroom in dynamic range. And that really does make all the difference in the world. I mean, there's obviously a lot of highlights. You, you can't recover completely blown highlights. There's a lot of stuff you can recover, but I, I've discovered that there's, you know, more than a few things that are just, it's, it's gone past the limit. Um, you could be the best photographer. I am much better event photographer than most are. I mean, I am. I, that's not hubris or boasting. I am. I'm much better event photographer than uh, most people are. I mean, they're, they're sitting there looking at their shot. I was like, oh, God, I missed that shot. Um, but when you're turning and the lighting goes from predictable and okay, you know, where you're not worried, you know, you're within the parameter to nuclear dynamic range where the highlights are going to be low. No, Nikon D500's a no on that. Um, but I've said that since day one, that the Nikon D500 this fast to blow out highlight. In any other photography where you're pointed at one spot, like where the birds are and the birds are coming in, you already know what your exposure is going to be, so you're not going to blow things. But when your things are happening all around you, literally 360 degrees, and you're turning like this, and you're walking, I don't care how good of a photographer you are or not, uh, it's impossible for something spontaneously to happen within 360 degrees of walking through an event and you know, moving uh, forward and backwards, and it's just not possible. So, this is a tip on uh, outdoor event photography. Is uh, while this has inferior, I, I mean, it's not going to be hardcore sports and action. I'm not worried about uh, continuous autofocus tracking with the Nikon D4. It's going to be people walking around, blah blah. Nothing really fast. You know, not birds on crack flying through the air and not, uh, you know, ski jumpers coming over the slope of, you know, 200 miles an hour. So I'm not worried about the uh, inferior autofocus, and it's not bad on the Nikon D4. But I'm bringing the Nikon D4 for outdoor event. I'll always grab a Nikon D4 for outdoor event photography. And you don't need more. It's, and event photography, too, is quasi-journalistic, and you don't need more than 16 megapixels. I mean, also, too, this is only 20. Full frame of 16 versus uh, crop sensor at 20. 
Um, obviously, I don't have as much crop ability on the Nikon D4, but I can zoom in really fast, even the stuff that's happening on the fly, and grab it with a 70 to 200 2.8. And I'm also going to bring a 300 millimeter f4 phase Fresnel. There's the only reason you pack that lens is for reach on a really lightweight lens that can dangle off your camera. That with a 1.4 teleconverter, you got 420 millimeters uh, focal. Then you end up, of course, it goes from a 300 millimeter f4 to a 300 millimeter 5.6. But so what? I mean, that lens is really lightweight and compact. Um, the Nikon uh, 200 to 500 is far superior, you know, whether it be at 300 millimeter f4, at f4, just a standalone lens, or with the teleconverter, the 200 to 500 is far superior. But I mean, that lens is obviously huge and obnoxious. It's not as bad as my 600 millimeter f4. So anyway, that's a tip for outdoor event photography. Don't care how good you are. When you have more dynamic range, you actually have more latitude for uh, the shot not being missed, even with slower autofocus. Um, someone say, well, if you got really radical nuclear dynamic range, why don't you dial it back a stop? You know, shoot everything in uh, aperture priority, negative one stop or stop in the third uh, exposure comp in the D500. That's also doable. It is. Um, Still not good enough. The dynamic range, get on an Icon D4 or D5. The only thing I would actually recommend the D5 for, and I don't recemend it at all, it's a horrible abysmal camera. It has an anti-aliasing filter, $6,500 of obnoxious. No, that camera is, even Nikon knows they screwed up on that camera. They shouldn't have stuck an anti-aliasing filter on there. It's way too overpriced for what it is. I know they stuck huge photo sites on there for great dynamic range, and it does have that. That's the only thing I'd actually want the D Nikon uh, D5 for. Um, the autofocus on it is not any faster. Sorry, it's just not. Um, people forget, too, autofocus is not merely determinant upon the camera, but also the lens. You could have the fastest camera in the world, autofocus-wise, and uh, stick an old slow lens on there. You know, people forget that the lens drives are uh, of six different varieties. There's screw drive, linear motors, silent wave motors, micro motors, rail motors, stepper motor. Yeah, I think there's seven in total. Yep. Yeah, seven. Yeah, well, it depends on how you split the two. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm babbling, babbling on. I've had too much caffeine. Thanks so much for watching. If you like these videos, you can always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Goodbye. See ya. Do 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 do